Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily breath? Join me right now and declare, say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Woo! Expect a miracle today. And you're not going to fight for it. You're not going to labor for it. It is going to come to you from your father who loves you. Praise God. Yeah. And that's why he wants you to always please him. Because he's done everything for, you know, sometimes people just think, you know, God is like this. You must please me. If not, I will not bless you. Hey, have you read the book of Judges? The children of Israel got into the promised land. And you know the story. The only two people that came into the promised land with them that came out of Egypt was Joshua and Caleb. Every other person died in the wilderness. So the people that were now entering the promised land were born after they left Egypt. So Joshua and Caleb were the only elders Understand that. So everybody else that came out of Egypt, they all died in the wilderness. Why? Because God was wiping people without that refused to believe him. There were things he told them in Egypt that they were going to experience in the promised land that they should look forward to, but they were not looking forward to those things. Now, they all died in the wilderness. Except Joshua and Caleb, because those ones held faith. Now, that's one thing you must learn from that story. Faith keeps you alive. So one way to have long life is to keep believing. Keep believing. Never get to that place where you think, I've believed this thing long enough. I don't know if it's going to happen. Keep believing. Keep believing. Praise God. Keep believing and walking towards that which you believe. Now, the Bible says Joshua died and eventually Caleb died. So there was a big problem. The people, because there were no elders in their midst who had understood. Now, everybody that came here saw the acts of God, but most of them did not really know the commands of God. See that now? So they began to turn away from the Lord. They began to worship other gods, like the Bible said. And then Satan began to take advantage of their lives. And then they will disobey God. And it got to a point that God started dealing with them in such a manner. Because like the Bible said in the book of Judges, that because of their actions, God did not remove some people. He didn't let them chase out some people from the land. Because God decided, I'm going to use these people to test them. So I'm going to use these people to put them in check. So when they want to go astray, these people will turn against them. They will remember me and they will come. Now God did that out of love, not out of wickedness. He did it out of love. He put in measures in their lives. Now that will tell you something also. That God never abandons his plan for your life. It doesn't matter how stubborn you are. It do, that's why I always tell people this. I say, listen, it is so easy. It doesn't matter where you are right now in life. It is so easy to turn around and do the will of God. It's so easy. Oh, I've walked far away from God. I don't even know where to start from. Start by turning around. Start by stopping. You stop. You are moving in the wrong direction. Stop first. Like they say, when you realize you're in a hole, stop digging. That's the first thing to do, stop. And when you stop, you turn around. Ask God for forgiveness because you have repented. When you ask God for forgiveness, the next thing is trust him for mercy. As for him, he is more interested in you fulfilling his work and his plans in your life. He is more interested in that than anything else that you want to say or do. You remember the prodigal son when the guy got home. He had rehearsed what he was going to say to his daddy. 
I'm going to tell him, oh, daddy, I just want to be a servant. You don't have to take me as a son back. And then he got to his father. When his father saw him afar off, the Bible says, he ran to him, grabbed him, kissed him, gave him new clothes, threw a party for him. Why? This is my son. See, that fulfilled his purpose. I still have a son. The fact that he was able to remember his home, remember his father, that was good enough for the daddy. The dad was not concerned about what he had to say. Now, that's just the character of God. Welcome home, son. I have this plan for you. Get into the job now and begin to fulfill. Because you see, the fulfillment of your calling, the fulfillment of the vision that God has placed in your heart has lots of ties with people. You're doing well is going to make other people do well. So God is interested in all these things. So don't think your God's plan for your life or your actions is just for yourself. That's why in life you can never be selfish. You find some people who say, eh, must I pay tight? That I don't have enough money. Why should I pay tight? Come on. You are being selfish. I'm telling you, that's the height of selfishness. You say you don't have money. You just really, God is never going to tell you to bring tithe from what you don't have. It is when you receive. When you receive. So now you have received. And God is saying, give me 10% of that. And it's not even enough to do what I have to do. Now, first of all, you are showing selfishness. And you are showing lack of trust. Lack of trust because you don't trust that God is the one that gives you power to get wealth. You don't trust it. You don't believe that. Selfishness because you want to use all this to meet your needs and forget because what do we do with the tithe? We use the tithe by the leading of the Spirit of God to meet the needs in other people's life. So you see, you detach yourself from other people and, and because you're selfish and so you don't obey God, you don't please God, and yet you still want him to bless you. It doesn't work that way. Not because God will say, I'm so angry with you, I will not bless you. No, no, no. Because, you see, when it comes to giving, God has finished his part. Every instruction God gave to us where giving is concerned is because of the earth and the angels. See that? So God, who had finished his work, I have explained these things to you, have instructed the angels already. He says he has given his angels charge concerning me. He has given his angels charge concerning me. Now we think, you know, that's how we get limited in scriptures. We think the charge is keep this my child in all his ways. Don't let his foot dash against a stone. So you feel angels are just there to to fight for you if anybody wants to fight for you. No. When he says he has given his angels charge concerning me to keep me in all my ways. What's he talking about? The admission I am going to get, maybe you're 10 years old. The admission I'm going to get when I'm 16, when I'm 17, when I'm 18 into the university. God has already given his angels charge concerning me about that school. See that? So there is a school that God has actually ordained for you to attend. And based on that, he has given angels charge. Now, you are not even there yet. But angels have been given charge concerning you. There is a place you are supposed to leave according to God's plan for your life. And God has given his angels charge concerning you already in that place what is the charge my son is going to come here this is his name when he comes you shall make sure everything he needs is fully supplied yes sir so they are stationed there already making sure that the place is ready for you to come so how am i going to come will i meet an angel that will tell me where to go that's where the spirit of god comes in so you're that, you're that student, now you want to write your, your exam into the university, and then while you're trying to fill the form, it comes to your heart. Write this school. 
Um, ah. But then it, it wouldn't leave your heart. And then you succumb. You say, okay, okay, all right. May you didn't even know that it was God that was leading you. And then you write it and then you get there. And then you just realize that things are somehow working out for you. Even when there's a challenge, somehow you come out of it. What do you think is going on? Angels have been giving charge concerning you. So now when God tells you, tithe or give this offering, the reason is because he has given the angels, he has told them before that day, that my son or my daughter is going to get here. When he gets here, he's going to give this offering. When he gives this offering, this is what you should do in response to him. So the angels are there. They've been told this thing 10 years ago. They, well, what am I saying 10 years ago? They've been told this thing even before you were born. And so they've been waiting there for you, praise God. Now, now I tell people this, your life can be easy. It can be easy. It can be. This is being fruitful. This is, this is where productivity is in God, praise God. Yeah, everything about you is concluded, concluded. The works were finished from the foundation of the earth. It is not when you are born, God now says, hey, angels, see this, my child. I'll tell you everything you need to do. It's not when you get to that job, say, angels, follow my child to that job. No, God is not doing all that today. He's resting today. Praise God. Yeah. He's finished the works. What is left is for you to do your own work. Which work? Work of obedience. So his spirit is here to guide you today. Now, that's what I've been telling you all week. Always, always pleasing him. Always finding out his mind concerning everything you do. Before you take a decision, ask him. So you receive that money. It is not enough for what you want to do. But then you remember, I just received some money. I've got to honor the Lord. So you take out the tithe from it. You didn't know that an angel had been instructed that on that day, you will bring a tithe. You didn't know that. And you didn't know that that angel had been told to solve that problem that you think is so big. And then you look at the tithe, you look at the problem, you say, Lord, I'll pay this tithe next month. Please, I need to solve this thing. It's very urgent. And then you take it, and you don't give the tithe. Meanwhile, the angel have been commanded that when you give that tithe, guess what? There is nothing, no prayer can move that angel to walk until you bring the tithe. Because that command, that charge was given to the angels before the world began. And God will not change from it. So you will pray, you will fast, you will cry. God will not do anything. The best God will do to you is he will, he will give you another opportunity to give a tithe again. That's the best God will do. But if you still refuse, you will continue in that situation. You will continue in that situation. It's so easy to be blessed. It's so easy to walk out of any challenge in this life. Very easy. Why? Because you didn't get to that place by accident. I've shared this many times and I'll share it again. How come when the children of Israel asked for water, the rock to give them water was not far away from them? How come when they got to the bitter water, the tree to cure the bitter water was right there? How come when Hagar, when she left, when, when Abraham sent her away, how come it was when they were famished, when they were they didn't know what to do. The angel didn't tell them to move some more. He just said, look up, see well of water there. The solution was always right there. Why? Because angels have been giving charge concerning you. Brothers and sisters, there is nowhere on this earth that you go to that there are, there have not, angels have not been positioned to help you. If you're going anywhere that there is no help, the angels will frustrate you from getting there. 
because they know if you get into that place, they will lose you. So they will frustrate it. But for them to make you to prosper, it has to be by you obeying every command that God has given to you. So you see the children of Israel now. God gave them commands. But here, because all that generation died and nobody was truly reminding them of how the people who kept God's command from the beginning, how they prospered. Nobody was reminding them. So they began to search for any God that they could find. And then they get into trouble. And God will raise a judge and use that judge to deliver them because of his love. And they are delivered. And they will stay good for a while. Then they will begin, begin to lust after all that gods again. The same challenge will come up. See that? That's not how your life should be. Don't let your life not be from one deep challenge, little victory, back into deep challenge. Now, when that is always happening in your life, it means you haven't found the pattern in walking with the Lord. From one financial mess to the other. Last year, you struggled to pay your house rent. This year, you're struggling again to pay your house rent. Something is wrong. There are principles in God you are not keeping right. Check your heart, first of, first of all. Oh, you struggle to pay your children's school fees. Every time it's school fees time, you're always struggling. Running health task. Stop it today. I say, Lord, this is wrong. Why? Because, you see, angels have been given charge. Where your concern? All those bills, they've been given charge concerning it. Because if God says you're going to live in a place, he knows everything that's associated to that place. And that's why, that's why as God's children, we, we mustn't evade bills we're supposed to pay. It's wrong. It's wrong for you as a child of God to, you know, to like, no, I, I, no, pay what is due. Pay what is due. Why? Because angels have been given charge concerning you. And there's an angel responsible for that. I've got to find this out. Praise God. I've shared this before. You know, you know we, one day, I, you know, sometimes, because where we live, we, we have um, access to um, fiber network. So since that came, you know how you realize that, of course, we use cable TV. And then now, with all these internet-based movie channels and all that, you realize that we hardly watch the cable TV in the house. The children watch their stuff that they need for school and all that on YouTube. So I felt one day, like, hey, nobody watches this cable TV. Why do we subscribe for it? You know, of course, when I mean nobody watches it, you just watch it once in a whole month, maybe a few times. So when it expired that way, I didn't bother. Like, I mean, nobody's watching it. Maybe if there's a need. And we were going on, and one day the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, you are keeping an angel dormant. I wouldn't want to do that. So which angel am I keeping dormant? And the Lord said, your cable TV angel. I said, how? And then the Lord said, you remember you had asked me before switching to this cable TV. And I gave you the go ahead. I said, yes, sir. And he said, from that day, an angel was assigned. And his job is to see to it that this cable TV is subscribed to. So now that you are the one that chose not to subscribe to it, that angel is dumb and he's not done his work. I said, dear Lord, how? I didn't know. Nobody taught me this thing. I didn't read this in the Bible. Because there was no cable TV in the Bible. Praise God. I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. Now, in my mind, I thought I was saving that money. Are you getting what I'm saying? I thought it, it didn't make sense subscribing to it when we're not using it. I thought we were saving that money. But God says, no, an angel is dormant. So it's not the money that was a concern to God. It's being fruitful that was a concern to God. If I'm fruitful, the angels are fruitful. Everything around me is producing fruit. Praise God. 
So that's why I said, don't, don't, start, don't be the one to start saying that, ah, I'm not paying, I'm not paying. You remember Jesus tax collectors came. Uh, Jesus asked Peter, are we supposed to pay tax? Peter said, no. He said, you know what? Let's not offend them. Because he was operating on that same principle. He thought, give to every man that acts of you. Because now, why did these people come to us? So we should give to them too. Yeah, but we don't have money here. There's an angel responsible. All right, um, where do we get money from? Oh, Peter, take your hook. That's what the Holy Ghost said. Take your hook, go to the, the first fish you can see coin in the mouth. It's enough to pay for two of us. And he did that because angels have been given charge. Learn to respond to every situation that presents itself before you. Learn to respond rightly. Don't respond in a harsh manner. Respond with calmness and with the wisdom of God. And my time is up. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Hey, if you're in Abuja, join us for our meeting this evening by 6 o'clock. If you're not in Abuja, join us online and just get blessed. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.